So this will be the engine installation in the RV4, in our case the IO409, but it'll be the same for a 320 or 360 engine. I'll show you how we did it in ours. It's definitely one of those projects that takes a little bit of thought. It's kind of like painting a house. You know, a lot of prep goes into it, but then the actual final installation is fairly quick. So there we just test fit it to the, to the frame to see if there's any interference. And sure enough, the oil filter adapter is going to have to be replaced on this engine because it hits uh, the engine mount for the RV4. So we'll just spin it off for now and we'll take care of that later. Uh, you see there how, in fact, you could get the engine on with the oil filter installed but you wouldn't be able to get the oil filter off so it'd be quite challenging uh, you'd probably have to cut it the first time so there we've replaced it with a horizontal one uh, so that's a, a good idea to test fit it up to the stand just to see where everything's going to lie and we'll disconnect the fuel line specifically on the rv4 it ends up quite close to the bottom mount so it actually hit the mount right now the fuel line actually has to go around uh, the engine mount itself and also the drain in the back of the fuel pump, it's really quite tight for the RV4 firewall. So you'll want to think about that. This is a pr uh, product from Vans that you could uh, put in the back of the fuel line, but in this case here, it actually has a, a port already installed in it. There's the fuel pressure pickup, so we actually replaced that, that little fuel fitting there. And then the oil pressure in the top right of the engine ends up very tight to the engine mount, so you definitely want to install that before you put the engine on the airplane. Yeah, if you're gonna have a prop governor, uh, now is the easy time to do it. And you wanna think about the orientation of the arm as well. So now thinking about the firewall, you see here that hole in the middle, that's actually for the prop governor, so that'll get riveted in first. But then we wanna think about really, what are we installing on the firewall before we put the engine on? It's gonna be brakes, all sorts of pressure lines, an oil separator potentially, some wires obviously for the engine, cabin heat, throttle, mixture, and prop cables and fuel lines. So again, putting that engine up into the mount for a quick test fit is going to be beneficial helping you lay all this out. And it's much easier to install all this stuff while the engine's out of the way. And there's the control cables on the, the left-hand side, which we actually did after we put the engine mount on, um, but it, it can be beneficial to do it earlier. All right, so now for the actual mount itself. Now we gotta be careful here because the top mounts and the bottom mounts are different. They're actually reversed. So you can see that the, the vibration dampener that's next to the engine at the top is actually on the outside on the bottom. So they get flipped around. So here's the actual uh, mounts themselves. You can see how the bottom ones are 180 out to the top ones. The bottom ones also have a bolt that's a little bit longer and they have a washer that's going to go against the engine to combat against the uh, engine sag over the future. So you want to be very careful. Make sure you study the plans of how this is going to lay out. So here's what it looks like in the end. So you can see the top mount, uh, that one uh, vibration dampener there on the right side is on the outside. And again, on the bottom, it's going to be against the engine. So those engine mounts are flipped 180 between the top and the bottom. Very important. All right, so now we're gonna actually mount the engine. So a little bit of prep going in there, we'll slide it in. It's gonna be quite tight on the RV4. If you have a prop governor line, it's gonna be quite tight to the mount. So just be careful that you don't bang it or wreck it, as well as the fuel pump will be a, a little bit tight. You might wanna pull the spark plug wires, get them out of the way, uh, just to make it all easier. Now the first one's gonna go in quite easy. It'll slide right into the hole there and you'll be able to get a couple threads on it. Of course the first one is going to be by far the easiest but this engine installation actually went really went quite well. So now we'll move on to the upper left one after we tighten this down a little bit again just a we just tightened it a little bit at the beginning to see how the other side lined up. Uh, putting the vibration dampener in there and now this one's probably going to be the hardest one to get in. Ours was off by about a quarter of a, a whole width or so so lifting, twisting the engine, it, actually pulling the engine away from the mount might help a little bit. Um, but what you don't want to do is force the bolt into the hole and wreck the bolt or wreck the engine. 
So we ended up tightening uh, that side a little bit more to pull the engine over to the right. And then the whole, the bolt went in the hole most of the way. So we could see the threads coming out the other side. So in that case, it's okay to tap it. I actually recommend a plastic hammer here, but that's the only one we had available. Um, but you don't want to thread it in, so you don't want to damage the hole. And you definitely don't want to hammer it in if it's, if it's not lined up properly. So in our case, it was most of the way through already. Just had to tap it a little bit to get it all the way through. And then spin the nut on. And then, in fact, the bottom two actually lined up really well. So if they don't line up for you, you know, you might have to lift the engine with the hoist. You might have to put a little bit of weight on the plane. Uh, you might have to lift the tail up a little bit. There's all sorts of things that you can do. So we lift the engine up a little bit. The top two bolts are not torqued yet. And we're going to insert uh, both the vibration dampeners against the engine because uh, if you only insert one, the second one's going to be very tight. So slide those both in. And then, of course, you have that extra washer that we talked about at the beginning that's going to go against the engine to prevent engine sag later. So really important uh, to have that washer in there. And then the bolt actually slid through. And then we'll put a washer and a nut on the other side and tighten it down. And we'll torque it on each side. And we'll put a little witness uh, mark so that we know we've torqued all the bolts. So there's the engine installation. Uh, it's definitely one of those projects that you know takes a little bit of prep, takes a little bit of thought, and then the actual putting the bolts in is kind of the quickest part of the whole process. So hopefully that helps you on your project. Uh, we got the IO409 in place. Now it's time to start fitting the cowling, thinking about the plenum. Uh, build yourself something, take it for it. Well, I'll see you on the next one.